Hello, everybody, and welcome to the 10th Point Weekly Season 2, Episode 2. It's always nice when the season and episode numbers line up. Um, this afternoon, because it is afternoon where I am, um, we're going to be running some Canadian Highlander um, in a tournament format uh, from the Canadian Highlander Discord. With me, I have uh, five players, soon to be six, and my esteemed co-host, the Red Mage. Hi, I'm the Red Mage. There, uh, there I'm stoked to be here. Yeah, I'm, I'm every week. I'm very excited. Uh, so, for a little bit of introduction for people who don't know what Canadian Highlander is, um, this is a 100 card singleton, one v one format where players start at 20 life. Um, so, it's got the vintage ban list. So. When I say 100 card singleton, most people tend to think, oh, commander, but it's it's much more like uh, vintage singleton um, or yeah, the, cube constructed. Yeah, the format that I have found is the closest in terms of like the type of cards that actually make your deck and uh, the uh, type, like how your deck, how your decks play is usually, is actually cube. I, find, I found cube to be like the perfect analogy. It's uh, you end because of the single tornado, it pushes you down to force you to play versions of an effect that normally, like you know, the fourth, fifth, sixth best version of an right. effect that normally you wouldn't get have to play in 60 hertz formats, but also you get to have, to have some absurdly powerful cards in your deck, right? Exactly, you're, you're gonna play the best two mana three three, and you're also gonna play the worst two mana three two, right? Um. So uh, not the worst. There's, <laughs> there's some really bad two mana three twos, but you're gonna, have to, you're, gonna, you're gonna have to reach down. <laughs> yeah. So um, to control the power level in the format, there's what's called a points list. Um, it's this just like big list of cards that are very powerful. Um, each of them have an associated points value, and you can only have up to ten points in your list. Hence the name of the channel and the show. Um, what other introductions do we have to do for Canlander? I mean, that's pretty much it. Um, if you want to know more about the format um, and you don't particularly care about watching the stream, <laughs> you can go and check out uh, Loading Ready Run. Did a great video uh, as episode zero of their North 100 series of what is... I'm going po to post a link to that video in chat, actually. Yeah. Um, uh, so if you don't know what Can Letter is at all, go and check that out. Um, this week, we have a bunch of very exciting decks. Uh, I'll uh, we should mention how to sign up for the tournament, actually. Oh, that's a great point. If you would like yeah. to play in this tournament, like if you watch this and you think, man, this is really cool, I want to do this, head over to the Canadian Highlander Discord. You can find it uh, with a link in chat that we'll post at the beginning here and then obviously at the end. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm posting the, the YouTube video and then I'm going to post. I'm, I'm on it, is what I'm trying to say. The, the Red Mage is, is the best. Um <laughs> You can also find a link to the Discord on the Canadian Highlander Facebook page. Um, and if you're in the Loading Ready Run uh, channel, they have a little hashtag Highlander channel. If you drop me, I'm at Eloquin on Discord, uh, and a little like at and like, can I please get invited to the Discord? Or really just post, can I please be invited to the Canlander Discord in Highlander in Loading Ready Run? You'll be good. And that channel is huge, so... Uh, I have no doubts that there will be at least somebody for whom that advice is useful. All right, so I'll, I'll run through our players really quickly. Um, this week, we have Nephila, Mr. Tulip, Robin, Seismic Lawns, Kara, and Transgirl Magic. Let's go. Kara's going to be a little late, and so... Yeah, we're gonna have to be kind of around one by. She had some family um, stuff going yeah. on, you know, life and all of that. So she's gonna join us uh, as soon as she's ready. But uh, we're probably gonna have to give it around one mouse behind. Yep. Um, so I am going to be testing something new this week. Um, I have obligations at three thirty, um, and so in order to make sure that this tournament doesn't drag on, you know, ad infinitum. Um, in X-Mage, th this is for the players mostly, in X-Mage, when you start up the game, set the round timer. Um, X-Mage uses the same kind of clock as MTGO. 
Um, just set the, the clock time to 30 minutes, so the maximum time your games could be is, is a full hour. Um, that just think, makes things like a lot more convenient for us. If it doesn't end up working, we'll change it for next week, but it is something that I want to try out. Um, and then associated with that is like timer etiquette. If you've never seen Moto, it's kind of like a chess clock. When you have priority, your timer ticks down. Um, if your opponent has a kill on board, like if they have like vault key and they're taking infinite turns, but they're only beating you with a 1-1, don't make them sit there, take 20 extra turns, and beat you with this 1-1 20 times. Just concede the game. You know what I mean? Um, uh, it yeah, I mean, we're going to assume that our players are like, you know, there, <laughs> that, there is nothing but pride on the line, right? We're right, assuming exactly. that our players are going to be honorable. If they are not, we're going to take... Uh, Appropriate uh, action. Oh, That's savage. Like, you know, like... <laughs> Some kills look deterministic but aren't. Yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna have we're gonna have to say that's important, right? Like maybe you have vault key, but you also have a mana crypt, right? And so yeah. your your opponent could potentially win the game, and you have to let them play it for you. Yeah. Don't don't like, you know. Obviously, don't concede games that you don't have to. But if like if it's gonna end. yeah, but concede the games that you have to. Is, yeah, exactly. I guess the the way the way that we what, what we're going to say. Yeah, pretty much. Um, <laughs> I mean that's that's everything. Uh, I guess we'll just get right into it. Um, I'm hmm. going to take a quick moment um, and mute myself and put the what's it called in chat the the matches in chat and then we'll get everybody cleared out. All right. Uh... Uh, yeah, this is this is, this is going to be a, a pretty exciting week. We have some we have a lineup of uh, pretty 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 nice decks, uh, which I'm not going to say until the people leave the chat. But uh, yeah, we're going to get to see some powerful magic, and uh, that's it's always exciting. Uh, the matchups are going to be um, well, actually, I thought that Yilo had posted them, but um, okay. The other thing, uh, the other thing that uh, is worth mentioning is uh, um, that is not actually worth mentioning, is it? I'm sorry, I'm just tripping on myself over here. <laughs> All right, here we go. Matches uh, posted in chat. Yeah, no, Separate sorry, I am. Uh, I'm trying to go through the. And uh, and while while we are doing the intro, I'm trying to like post uh, all of these, uh, all of the, uh, like the link to us in like a bunch of different discords to have people show up in chat. And uh, so I've been a little. Uh, I'm gonna put my game face on as soon as we start. But, um, uh... <laughs> <That's accurate. laughs> oh, am I back? Oh my god. Yeah, you're back now. I don't know yeah. if it's because on my end or on, or on my No, on no, your that's end. on I thought it was on mine because I, I do it to have like a, a network starter, but. Nah, that's on my end. Although, so there's good news and bad news. The bad news is this is probably going to continue happening, which is really frustrating. But the good news is at least I know what the problem is now because I had Task Manager open at the time. So um, for some reason, my internet is configured such that if I ever use. If this computer, the one that I'm streaming from, ever uses 100% of the possible bandwidth that's allotted to it, it just force disconnects me from the network, which is really cool and also great. I want mm. to fall apart. Uh, <laughs> um, it really, the network is the first thing to go? <laughs> like, that? That's, that's their big... Uh... Well, 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 the thing is, like... It's still connected to the internet. The network's still connected to the internet, but it's still, it just, like, force disconnects this computer. Very frustrating. Um, so, our matches are Nephila versus Seismic Wands, Robin versus Transgirl Magic, and, obviously, Tool of the Pie. So, uh, Seismic Wands is on Warrior Ag Warrior's Aggro, and Robin is on White-Blue Knowledge Pool Control, which I can tell you more about if we watch the matches. Um, Nephila okay. is on Jund LD, um, and Transgirl Magic is on Big Blue. So, what do we want to watch? I don't know. It's a while since we have watched some land destruction. In fact, I don't think we have had a had a land destruction deck on stream. It's like it's like a, a this style of tempo that we don't often see. Yeah. 
on the other hand, the knowledge pool deck is like, what? But I don't know. I'm sure that there will be occasions to watch the to watch the deck. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I'm kind of tempted to watch some some land destruction, but right. um, yeah, let's do that then. So okay, let let me ask you. Let me ask you this: Do you think that the knowledge pool deck is so bad that if we don't watch it round one, we won't have an actual excuse to watch it later? <laughs> uh, no, I actually think that the deck looks fairly competent. Um, okay, it's a blue white <laughs> shell uh, around a. And I think TGM is in a match with somebody called Pringus, who's playing Tundra and Plains, which means that this is not the correct <laughs> opponent. Wrong, wrong way, go back. <laughs> uh, um, uh, I'm going to hop in. Wait, no, no, no. TGM is playing the right person. Neffel is playing Seismic Lawns. Okay, we're, we're all good. So... Robin is on, is named Pringus and is playing a game with TGM. Um, she's on, uh, t TGM is on Big Blue and Robin is on, uh, Knowledge Pool Control. Alrighty. So this is probably going to be our, our longest match, so we can probably come back so, to it. So, yeah, okay, let's watch, let's watch some of the destruction. Yeah. Then. Nephilon, kind of John Delty versus, where is it? Yeah, okay. Uh, so the stream still stays, still stays going online. I don't think you have changed the scene. I clicked the change scene button. I mean, I'm watching it, but that's awkward. Maybe it's on a large delay. I am not entirely sure. Oh wait, no, this is a vod <laughs> that I'm watching for. Why did? It... I click on the channel and it made me watch a VOD? What's going on? That happened to me the other day when I was I was watching a, a streamer that I like. It was just like, like I, I clicked their stream button and yeah, no, no. and it went to a VOD of them playing, which was very We're good. We're disturbing. Good. Do we have chat displayed on our stream stuff? Like, I know, I know that when I am doing the stream, I... Have it, I have it displayed on the left in the monumental amount of space that you have available, but I don't know if you I am up. not going to tempt fate by doing that. <laughs> I feel like displaying chat and receiving chat at the same time is uh, a huge mistake in terms of uh, internet uh, access, and also I would have to set it up right now. No, 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 that's fine. I'm just wondering if I just was wondering if you had already set it up. No, I, I have not. I mean, it's just text. It, it, it's not yeah. really the thing that is stressing your stream, but. <laughs> All right, so we're into the games. Let me, let me yeah, give, get some hands. Well, we're coming to this game a little late. We have watched the, the we have missed the first couple of turns. We have we see the um, land destruction player. Uh, really doing a whole lot of land destruction. I mean, well, we see uh, uh, a fetch lane in the graveyard. No, I, I, two I, I, fetches in the graveyard. So. Well, just two fetches. Fetches yeah. don't count. Fetch fetches don't count. But our, our warrior player is not stumbling on lands. Yeah, naturally. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and that's not the greatest of news when you're especially like, oh, not I'm on. gonna stone rain you. Yeah. So um, we see I, a Huntmaster of the Fells here. Uh, Huntmaster of the Fells is very likely gonna eat a. Has uh, these. Uh, um, Nephola has a relatively developed board at this point, thanks to his own master of the fields. Uh, I think that uh, she's trying to seismic extent to gold Nephola to block with the wolf because then she can cleanly answer the hand master with a plow. But I mean, I think it, this is not a good block. If you're blo I guess you could double block. I guess actually, yeah, but then you lose your hand master. Never mind. Uh... All right, I'm back. I think All right. the stream is back also. Yeah, I mean, the stream has been up, as far as I can tell. I didn't see the stream go uh, go down. Perfect. So, um, or for very briefly, at the very least. Uh, it came back up pretty pretty immediately. I just, uh, I just, I just couldn't hear you for a while. Uh, somebody has made... Uh, Tulip has made the, the point that uh, switching back to legacy audio uh, from whatever audio... The default that uh, 
Discord users has fixed things for him in terms of the audio being choppy and awesome. Discord being less demanding in terms of audio things. So maybe you could try doing that. So not not now. I don't know. Mm, we'll see. Seismic Clones actually is not doing a bad job of catching up. He decent master needs to go away, but he has a plow in hand ready to go. Um, on the other hand, uh, Nephola has a Putrefy as their only real card, so uh, we'll see. We'll see how that goes for them. But this Hunter Master is a big problem for Seismic. Elo, did you disappear again? No, I'm here. Did did okay. Seismic Wands play Irrational Foremost after <sighs> combat? Yes. Card has an ETB trigger. Uh, I think that his reasoning was that he wanted to have plow up. Ah, uh, fair enough. If, uh, if Nephola double blocks, uh, you can go Gari Charm to kill both creatures. I um, mean, come on. But the double block is awful. Like, I don't yeah, think the, you expect the, the your double block, to block. Double blocking the three open mana is just, like, not what you do. There's Molten Rain. Uh, so... Final, finally, land destruction <laughs> spell from the land destruction player. It's happening. Neff Neff has the hard choice here of like, what do you molten rain? This is the classic question in in uh, LD, is like, what colors do you take your opponent off of? That's oh, where the... I, I, I molten an implant too. Pick up the stream. This is really frustrating. Uh, I mean, I could again. It has this problem that. Uh... Often when we do this, uh, I have to leave at like five or five thirty, and uh, if I have the stream, I'm committing to be here up until the end, and that's. Uh, I can uh, grab it again on the back half, but having it crash every five minutes is just like. All right. Yeah. So how about this? Let's try to get to the end of. Um, let's try to get to the end of these uh, of this match. Right, and then okay. uh, in the in the downtime, we'll uh, we'll try to we'll try to switch when there isn't uh, live magic going on. I'm having a uh, charming visual bug with X Mage here, where I can't see anything that's on the battlefield, or either player. I can only see uh, dialogue boxes for what permanents exist. Nice, nice wolf token, though. I see, I see from the stream. Uh, I, I don't see anything on the stream right now, to be uh, entirely frank with you. I'm gonna... Well, I mean, the, this, <laughs> the, uh, the stream seems up. Like, the this, this stream seems normal to me. Like, it seems like you're displaying normal... We're, we're normal running damage. on a pretty large delay. Uh, okay, so... Thorn Lieutenant swings in. Nephila electing not to Molten Rain, and instead to flip the Huntmaster, got really hard punished by path like yeah, yeah. Hunt master flips over and kills the Irration foremost which is cool but like i mean you trade you traded what two for one on the hunt master and if this wolf does anything it's three for one which isn't bad but like <laughs> molten rain take out your red source i feel was the the play there yeah, your opponent is stumbling on mana. I think you. I think. I think like this is what your deck is designed to do, right? Like Press the when your opponent stumbles on mana, you jump on their throat and squeeze, and uh, you're just not doing that, which is odd to me. Yeah. Um, Ness swings in with the wolf here. So I mean, Seismic can't cast his cards in hand. Uh, I feel like that is going to be a pretty common occurrence in games that we watch with uh, LD. Well, I mean. But Neft didn't do anything for it. Seismic is, I mean, yeah. Seismic is, is also the unfortunate. He's running a four color deck and already has a shaky mana. Base, yeah, exactly. Which is an aggro four color deck, which is already cutting on lands, right? Because, like, like this is an yeah. aggro mid range deck. So, like, the number of lands that you play is already not a whole lot. Yeah, the, the it's classic. It's like a good number. Like, the worst matchup for Basta, which is a, a four color aggro deck, is. Anything that runs Stone Rain. Because, like, yeah, I mean, your opponent Stone Raining, the only red source that you have, just kills you. You just, like, lose the game. Yeah, yeah you just lose. So, and, and this is, like, I don't think, I don't expect this to be, like, significantly different. Neff fetches from uh, Overgrown Tomb tapped here. Draw a sinkhole. I mean, and, and now we're seeing the, the kind of cost of the LD deck is that 
you know, sometimes when you need a threat, you're going to draw land destruction. And sometimes when you need land destruction, you're going to draw a threat. And that's yeah, that yeah. can be a really frustrating way to lose a game that you really had no... But Sinkhole is good here. Your opponent, uh, like, oh, you'll yeah. have a threat in terms of this, like... The your opponent here... is just not going to have anything. You, you, you kill this Tundra, now they're also off of white. The, the problem here and for, they have for Nephila man? is that they're dying. They're going to lose the game if nothing about the sports state changes. Do what? A Thorn Lieutenant? They're going to answer a Thorn Lieutenant. They can cast spells and they're Eventually. Opponent. But, like, I don't know. The ideal draw there was not Sinkhole. It was, like, a way to kill Thorn Lieutenant. I mean, I... I mean, the, the ideal draw was something bigger than Thorn Lieutenant. Than yeah. Bali gets yeah. It, but, like... Yeah, okay, sure, but also I don't think Sinkhole is that bad. Because you can set your opponent, like, your opponent was, was set back, but now they're just going to go to the Stone Age. Yeah. I, so here's the thing, um, from my perspective, Nephila fetching for the Overgrown Tomb on their end step. Ooh, was... that's bad for Nephila. That's Let's extremely bad. Because the cards that can cast... Herald of Dromoka is, like, possibly the worst thing that could have been drawn here, and it's a common. That sucks. I mean, it's not, like, the worst thing, but it's a card you can cast. Uh, Nephora getting really I'm not gonna from lie. Not Vigilance here is really bad, because Neph has a Thorn Lieutenant, which trades up on the wolf, and now... Mm. Or Seismic has a Thorn Lieutenant, and so now Neph is, is sort of caught in this Catch-22. Pardon me, Catch-22. No, right? I mean... I don't think the vigilance is what matters. It's just that uh, now Seismic Clones is, is uh, like has two has two bodies, which complicates the problem. Now now you need two answers instead of one. Yeah, I mean drawing Sylvan Carrioted is pretty good here because now you can block Thorn Lieutenant and Herald of Dromoka and not worry too much about it. Yeah, I guess you can block Thorn Lieutenant. Uh, and you can trade with the Herald from with your Wolf. Yeah, which which is just a, a completely fine play. Neff electing to fetch. Am I missing something? Why is the sinkhole not in Neff's hand anymore? Uh, they cast it. Oh, the Savannah died, and the Seismic Clones drew a Tundra at some point. I am. I did yeah. not. I missed that. <laughs> no, it's okay. Yeah, um. Uh... Strip mine is and a pretty poor two, draw. Here. Two white dual lands. I was like, oh, okay, so now do we have. Uh, yeah, the... Speaking of dual lands, I was posting the channel the other day. Uh, I am now the owner of a volcanic island. I, congratulations! That's th the most expensive land in Magic: The Gathering, I think. After maybe uh, Tabernacle. It's, it's uh, well, I, it's actually not even the most expensive dual. Uh, Underground is, is more expensive. Really? Yeah, huh. Underground Seas are like eight hundred bucks. But <laughs> Jesus Christ! Yeah, it, uh, underground, underground Sea is kind of nuts. <laughs> yeah. Seismic Lawns kind uh, of bluffs uh, an attack here that, you know... If no, they I, think, I, think you, I think you do it. You force, you force a trade. Uh, you expect that you can draw stuff. And like, you expect that you have to draw here. <laughs> yeah, about the case, these. So, so I, I was trying to get to this point eventually, but Neff had a ton of lands... Drew a fetch land, played the fetch land, and then elected to fetch immediately. But they were on an odd life total, and their opponent was swinging in with a 2 2. There was no reason to fetch. Yeah, I would not have fetched there. I, I and and so, so fetching had had nothing changed about the board state. Had, had Nephila drawn nothing meaningful and Seismic Lawns drawn nothing meaningful, fetching there took a turn off of your clock. Uh, I for think that's the uh... benefit. Yeah, I mean, the difference... Uh, um, because you good. have Sylvan Cariathid, it doesn't matter as much. Because like, your opponent can't kill Sylvan Cariathid. Yeah. It's, that's just not a thing that is possible. It's got Hexproof. But it's not easily, right? Like, um, So, like, it doesn't matter as much. Your opponent's clock is basically zero. Yeah. And if they throw another threat at this point, uh, it's like it would have to also have two power. Which, that would be kind of weird. Seismic... Draws Den Protector, um, which is great here because you can morph. Yeah, you you put you put it, you play it face down and then you can flip it and regrow a fetch land. Yeah, you, you regrow like a fetch land and bring it back. Um, yeah. So it's gonna take a, a billion mana. Yeah, electing not to play that immediately into open mana and cards in hand. 
sort of makes sense. Because if uh, if Neff if you swing down if you're like all right morph and Neff goes abrupt decay your morph before you can do anything meaningful with it, then you feel really bad because now you have yeah but Neff has one freshly drawn card in hand I think you jam yeah like I I I, I, I I I I'm gonna dis I'm gonna dis I'm, I'm gonna disagree like <laughs> oh, you cannot put your opponent on I'm sorry I'm shaking off a cold so no it's um, okay I'm gonna um. <laughs> Oh my god! Are you okay? Yeah. Shaking off I'm pneumonia. Fine. Uh, but like, if your opponent was empty hand and they have just drawn a fresh card, I think you just jam things into their face. Did Seismic if just they, if they play... drew it, they drew it. But did Seismic just cast and protect their face up? The protector is unblockable right now for what it's worth. Oh. Yeah, because it can't be blocked by creatures with power, uh, uh, power less than it. And uh, you see that you see immediately the yeah, decay. Okay. I mean, we know it doesn't matter, but like, what was the case for not playing that face down? Uh, the face is that if you draw a land next turn, if you draw like if you draw a red source next turn, you probably don't want to tie your mana into flipping this stupid thing. And you want to cast one of these impactful, like this goblin, this goblin rabble master, for example. Right, right, but flipping it over ensures that. Eventually, you will be able to cast the Goblin Rebel Master. What's Neff's draw here? Ravager Worm! Dude, this is a Ravnica Allegiance card. No, that's gonna... That can kill the strip mine, so I'm assuming that we're gonna get... This, this Orber is gonna get stripped in response? That, that does so it doesn't play black, right? What doesn't play black? Seismic? Uh, no, Seismic, seismic is all colors right? but blue. Yeah, so... Why so, does he have a Tundra? Um, that's a great question. It's just for fetching purposes, I guess. So you I, can fetch... Uh... Fetch a white source off of a blue uh, fetch. Probably. Um... Uh, hi, hi. Um... Oh, goodness. Hi, hi Cheetah. So, so Ravager Worm... Here's a thing. Oh, and Agila. Right, right, right. Yeah. Nah, okay, that, that, does make, that does make a little bit more sense. So, yeah, you want to, you want to be able to activate Najila. I do not... Oh, yeah, Najila, right. I do not have the images for, like, half of RNA cards, but I have images for the other half. Not entirely sure. Ravager Worm. Yeah, I don't know. For whatever reason, next mage didn't automatically update the, the RNA cards for yeah. me either, but they're fixed now. I I, I, punched, uh, I punched it in the face until it worked, but it took a little bit of convincing. For those of you uh, who haven't seen Commander Ravager is Worm. another red card that Seismic Clones can't cast. With Seismic Worm opted to... Uh, fight so, so the Thorn there are probably several of you who have not seen Ravager Worm. It's a 6 mana 4-5 with Riot, which means it enters with a counter or haste uh, at your choice. And then when it enters the battlefield, you can either uh, fight a creature you don't control, or destroy a land with an activated ability that isn't a mana ability. Um, card's really good. Just 2 for 1's a lot of the time, because you can play it as up to a 5-6, which not a lot of things beat in combat. This uh, this feels like a treason. Uh, Nephila just played a warrior. Heartbreaking. <laughs> yeah. Swing I mean, Nephila your one is gonna clean up, right? Like this, it's just gonna get him for four and. Uh... Blocks. Ravager Room does not have trample, so. He does not have trample, but like, Seismic also can't just be like, oh, I'm gonna just block a return of the game, like. Not gonna lie, I don't think they're. I, th I think I, I mean I, I think he needed to draw a red source and. Another and, red uh... card that is uncastable. I think away goes. I mean, his deck is based red. Yeah. All right, in the game two. That was a pretty clean um, LD game. Just destroy their yeah. creatures and then kill them. Yeah, the land destruction deck doing what the land destruction deck does. Yep. It's, uh... We see Nephila with a hand of uh, three lands. Okay. Pet peeve with X Mage. <clears throat> number uh, number 70 billion, I guess. <laughs> After game one, it switches the position of the players. Yeah, which makes not a whole lot of sense. And I like uh, having, uh, like, when I, when I have the overlay, I like having the player on top be the player on top in my list, in my yeah. match list, and the other way around. So, so I have to switch when we switch games, and it's some... Yeah. Um, Seismic has, like, probably two of the best cards in his deck in his hand right now. 
uh, Metallic. Nephilim has a soul ring, though. So how how's that for you? Neph has soul ring, which is points. How how how, how do you think how, how do you think uh, is that how do you think does the uh, turn turn three Chand turn two Chandra work? Well, uh, who... Really well. <laughs> yeah, it turns out power powerful card. Yeah, Chandra, <coughs> Chandra the mind sculptor here. Cards mm. real good. Um, so I think uh, Lance Stones has even a G line in hand, which is the, like basically the reason to play Water Struggle. Yeah. Deck. So that part's nice. I think if you're Neff here, you lead on Bloodbraid Elf because if you have Chandra, if if Lance plays a, a threat here, Chandra can minus three and kill it, but like, and then she dies, right? So playing yeah. playing BBE is a very likely twofer. Um, yeah. And then, like, you get to, to trade with things and whatever, and then the turn afterwards you can play Chandra with a blocker, or maybe two, depending on what you hit. Yeah, there is an argument that you might, might, might maybe don't want your opponent on top with this Metallic Mimic, if, because if uh, Seismic goes, like, one drop, two drop yeah. here. Yeah. Metallic Mimic metallic is, is really, really, really good. Like, you, is... might, you might want to be like, maybe, maybe we don't do that. Maybe yeah. we just uh, we don't take the chance, but I think you might be correct. That it's better to play Bloodbraid. I think if if Seismic plays a land here, yeah, Le Neff leads on Bloodbraid. If Seismic yeah. plays Najila here, things are going to get out of hand really quickly. Oh, free free the ready. There the you ready. go. Cool. I don't mom, have an image for mom, that mom's either. Mom's the ready. X Mage, please. Um, this oh, is the now, you can, now you can, if you want, you can even just uh, okay. He she he opts not to because this console just trades for the stuff. But he could have just. Uh, <clears throat> I'm sorry. Sacked they the could have just. Uh, yeah, just chucked the soul ring at something. Yeah. Sacked the soul ring and chucked it at Metallic Mimic. So so if if yeah. Seismic draws a land here, it's insane. He did not. Oh, well, they don't but... have a third land? You're right, yeah. they don't. That huh. sucks. Play, playing a land Najila here means you get a, a 4 3 Najila and two. Two two warriors, which is like. Do you yeah. throw really your? Um, do you throw your board at the ready here? Uh, Tattermunch Maniac has to attack, so that's probably gonna attack. I mean, like, it's tough. Metallic Mimic is gonna die to a Duretti downtake next turn anyway. Um, like sacrificing this construct yeah. of the Metallic Mimic. So I imagine. <coughs> Like, it super sucks to not be able to play something with Metallic Mimic. And he's going to no, take advantage. He can play something pretty common, right? Like, single he, he's ca he can play something with Metallic Mimic because he can play something pretty common. Yeah. But, but then... Like he gets to play the third yeah, effect. Boom, bust. What a great card. Um, I'm not sure it would go with great, but it's a card. Uh, it's a fun card. Boom, boom is great. Uh, the ready has a minus one, so he's still gonna be able to do its thing next turn. Blocking the construct on Metallic Mimic makes a lot of sense here. Yeah, I guess that you can't really chuck the Sol Ring though, because you because I think that the Neff is also. Uh, or yeah, I mean, I don't know. They like chucking the Sol Ring uh, when you only have another land in hand. I, like... I really hate chucking the Sol Ring here. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> Yeah, especially when your construct still trades with the Tother Man. Can Neff play Ravager Worm here? Blood Crypt is red. Rupan Crag is green. Red. Yeah, she has double yeah. green and Blood Crypt makes red, yeah. I think you just uptick with the ready. Yeah, Ravager, Ravager fight. Uh, fight the Thunder Tenon. And then Jundam. Yeah. Like, really press or, your I'll play Chandra. Chandra is also a pretty reasonable match. Ch Chandra is a good card. <coughs> Down and you kill a thing. Yeah, um, just keep, keep Thunder Tenant. If you're Neff here, do you swing him with Bloodbraid? Oh, no. No? No, I, I don't like him with Bloodbraid. Because if your opponent has a removal spell for the Construct, then you're Chandra. Yeah, good point. Fair enough. Seismic is going to take advantage of how good Thorn Lieutenant is. It's a 2-mana two 2-3 two, with only upside. What a card. Yeah. Um, in fact, actually, even if your opponent, like, if you're to win with Blood Raid because of Thunder Tenant's ability, you're resigning yourself to your opponent uh, not, uh, like, killing the Chandra yeah, yeah. anyway. 
So you, I, I, I think your planeswalkers are gonna win the game if you, if, if your opponent can attack them. I, I totally so... agree. What do you, what do you play here? Najila or Mikado <laughs> Rioters? Rioters. Uh... You only have three land types, so it's only gonna be a three three. Uh, I mean, three mana five five is okay. It's what beyond, it's going? beyond Chandra. Um. Mardu Charm does things. I don't oh, he doesn't have an island, so it's a, just a 4-4. Four, four. Okay, if Matt Carrefer is just a 4-4, four, four, I think. Okay. Plays Najila. I mean, Seismic is forced to attack with this Tattermunch at least, and Najila making 1-1s? One, no, I think, I think, I think, I think, you should, I, I think, I, I don't, yeah, I think you have to attack with the water as well, right? Yeah, I think you, you attack with both. Najila double triggers. You make like the water. The attacking with the water basically gives it vigilance. Yeah, you, like you, you have get to attack... you get to make more attacking borders. You have to attack both of these warriors into Chandra, and I think it's... yeah. I think the water needed to. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. As Neff here, I... I I don't understand this attack. I don't understand why one water. Is... I mean, okay. So so as Neff here, you block the construct on the. Uh, on the main range, and then and then the black blade right blocks whatever is so blocking. everything lives. All of your planeswalkers live. Yeah, that's why I don't understand why not attack every, all the all the warriors are shan, right? Yeah, that's that's sort of a, a strange attack. Or one more warrior is shan, right? Yeah. Would have done the trick. So now now Neff gets to respond. Well, or at the very least, you force the warrior the concept not to trade with the tatter munch, which is better for you anyway. Like yeah. So Neff, I think, Neff I think gets... I like all the water attack Chandra here, and the Thatterman attacks anything. Neff gets a a one one on their next turn from Duretti. Gets mana off of Chandra and could probably even play emissary of grudges. I mean, there's yeah, kind of but... no point. I I'm on full Ravager Worm. Tell your thing. Yeah, you just you just slam the worm and kill Nagila. Oh, like you can't let Nagila live. Okay, drawing a fetch lane with boom bust is insane here. I mean, Neff absolutely should have played the fetch lane. So it, for those of you who don't know the interaction between boom bust and fetch lands, boom is destroy target land you control and target land you don't control. If one target becomes illegal for this spell, the other target is still valid and the spell will still resolve. So you can play a fetch land, play boom bust targeting your fetch land and your opponent's land, and then fetch in response. You get a land and you get to destroy. You get to sinkhole essentially with boom. Um, yeah. I, I think another there's... another land that gets often played uh, to uh, to um, abuse the interaction is flagstones of Trocare. Yeah, I, I think there's there's absolutely no reason not to fetch land with this boom bust. Like, Chandra uptake, play your fetch land, boom bust, target your fetch land, and jund him. Well, if she, if the uptake had already happened, was the boom bust in hand, or was it the Chandra reveal? Uh, it was in hand. I see. Yeah. I mean, t to be fair, it's entirely possible that Neff doesn't know the interaction between boom, boom bust and fetch lands. I well, okay. We, 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 let's give our players credit. Yeah, the, I, I sincerely doubt. They put in their deck too. Yeah. Uh, maybe maybe they just didn't see it or something. Uh, well, this is uh, seismic clones oh. again. Uh, Cups of red. Hey, you remember Mardu Strike Leader? Yeah, Mardu Strike Leader was sweet. Dude, uh, so do you remember? I, play, I played. I played the one copy of this guy, the Nabzan Agro, for. A very long time. One week, I believe. <laughs> and then That's, I cut it. Yeah, it's not a good card, but if you'll remember... Um, it's, not, it's not a bad card. It's just that, like, Abzan Agro was... Like, on three mana, you would play you would play pretty absurd things. I mean, Dam Protector is just a, is a, was a better card for the deck, and yeah. uh, on three mana, you, you were... You, on three mana, you would play you, just Dam Anafenza. Like, have you read Anafenza? She is the foremost. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing. Uh, we... Yeah, it, 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 Seismic has just that. Yeah. Uh, these Planeswalkers are just going to win the game. I think early, it's reason. Early on in this tournament, in Season 0, uh, there was, for like two weeks, a segment of the best card you're not playing. Uh, uh -huh. And one of them was... Uh, what's it called? That, that, that card that we just saw. 
Mardus Reichler? Yeah, yeah. And you, you I, rem- I, rem- I, rem- I remember it. it. I remember it at some point. Yeah. Uh, it being mentioned. I mean, it's not a, it's not a bad card. It's it's just. Uh, I'm I'm moved to, to I'm, I'm moved to the transparent magic versus yeah uh, versus um, uh, Robin here. Yeah. So, so that was a match. Yeah. That no. it was a series of things that happened. Yeah, that, that, it that, really that... sucks uh, uh, that uh, for a player playing against uh, land destruction to draw to have land light draws like that's just like because that compounds the problem, right? Land light draws and being in four colors makes your land destruction matchup real bad. Uh, five colors. Five? Oh, right, Nigella. Yeah. Well, I mean, yep. do you have any blue cards in your deck? So, we're we're watching a very interesting game. Um, I, I'm not I'm sure I would go with interesting. There is a storm. There is an Inquel Leviathan in play. I'm pretty sure this game is over. <laughs> Wait, what does that one do? Uh, it has Shroud, mostly, and then it also has Island Walk and Trample. Yeah, it's like a 7-11. Oh. Uh, yeah, but so it, it, like, its main thing is that it has Shroud and it's big. But, uh, so that, that's, why, that's why it's usually a thing. It has, it has Shroud and other relevant text, right? Trample. Yeah, I mean, it, and Island, Island Walk and Trample, like, it has some some amount of evasion in its form, the forms of Island Walk and Trample, which yeah, is Island good, like, it's better than... Three, yeah, I mean it's it's up now. It's it's active now, right? Yeah. This is a uh, game two. Robin is up yeah. one, so we're we're looking at a game three situation here. It seems likely. Yeah. Uh, so what was Robin playing? Knowledge pool lock. Uh, he was in the knowledge pool uh, control deck, which is a thing, I guess. And um, transgird magic on mono blue something. So. Just control? What's, yeah, what's, um, what's big, the big blue? Um, big blue, okay. Yeah. <laughs> TGM is going to generate a lot of mana here. Uh, play play big cards for the most part. I'm going to request, request permission to see some hand cards. I so, mean, they don't need to play b- more big cards. They have a storm, they have an inquil by a thing play. Like, Tinkerwell is yeah. plenty big. So, let me explain the uh, lock with Knowledge Pool while I have the time. Okay. Curse of Exhaustion is two white white for a, a curse. You enchant a player, and the enchanted player can't cast more than one spell each turn. Um, this is essentially rule of law, but only for uh, the player that you're targeting. Oh, arcane laboratory, I see nerd. what's happening. Knowledge Pool. Uh, let me pull up an image of Knowledge Pool. Uh, scry... Uh, mm, knowledge pool is what I would describe as a whole thing. Knowledge knowledge pool is uh, a commander card. I mean, what? <laughs> no, it's it's a it's a jank from Mirrodin Besieged. Uh, can we see that on stream? Yeah, we can. Okay, so it's a it's a six mana artifact, um, and it oh goodness gracious, and it reads when it enters the battlefield, it's uh, each player exiles the top three cards of your library. And then whenever a player casts a spell from their hand, uh, they exile it. And then if if they exile it, right, so if it actually happens, um, he or she may cast another non-land card exiled with Knowledge Pool without playing that card's mana cost. So essentially what happens is whenever you cast a card, um, you exile it into Knowledge... You put it under Knowledge Pool, and then you can cast anything else from Knowledge Pool. Yeah, your spells don't do what they do, they do what... Any one spell of your choice that in the right. knowledge pool does. With rule However, of law, though, because the start of this requires you to cast a card, the second asks you to cast a card again. And with rule of law, curse of exhaustion, arcane laboratory, things that require you only mm. to cast one card a turn, um, you just can't cast spells for the rest of the game. Yep. I mean, yeah. But the person with the knowledge pool still can. Yeah, because the Curse of Exhaustion is obviously enchanting only one yeah, player. It's, it's a symmetric. It's, it's not symmetric. So, Caged yeah. Sun? Yeah, it's, it's a, it, doubles the, you, it doubles the mana from the land type of your choice. Fair enough. Is, is, is there a possibility storm around? I don't even know what that card does, to be frank. No, there, is no, there are no possibility storms involved. It, it's bad knowledge pool number two. Does it also lock with Arcane Lab? 
It doesn't. Yes. Uh, mm, I don't think it does. No, no, it, no it does. I, I don't even know what the card does, so... It does. Pretty much, instead of being actual knowledge pool, it you... says when you cast a spell, you flip from the top until you find another spell, and you cast that one instead. Yeah. Oh, you, so it you does... find another spell to It's type. It's, it's, it's a card that... Uh, it's, also, it's a card that can also in a different style of combo, which is closer to polymorph type thing, where uh, you basically right. make so that your, your deck doesn't have uh, any creature spells in it, except for Emrakul, the Eon's Thorn, and uh, you then proceed to put a creature spell on the stack that is not a creature spell in the front. So, for example, yeah. Zueti Cavern works, right? Because you, you play Dude, so face down as a morph. Such a cool card. You play it face down as a morph, and on the stack it's a creature, so it will trigger uh, Possibility Storm as a creature, except that then it won't, uh, like, it's not something that you can find when going through your deck. And then you made so that the, the thing that you find is every single time Ember Cold Day on Storm. So, so TGM impulses here um, and finds something. Uh, is TGM on Bolt Key? Uh, or does she just, just play key to, to untap like uh, Mana Bolt? I, I, honestly, I think she's just playing key to untap Mana Bolt. <laughs> uh, TGM is going to immediately tinker this Voltaic key out for probably... Yeah, no, uh, your opponents, no Your opponents are on white. You have to find, you have to find Tinker. You, can, you cannot turn the risk that they have a plow in hand. Ooh, nasty Force of Will here. Exile's yeah, propaganda. is pretty good. Two for one for two for one. Man, that's that's real nasty. Nah, I'm not even sure it's that nasty. I it's mean, it's, good. it's really bad for TGM here because that was like the action of her hand for the most yeah, part. Yeah, she doesn't have anything more going on. Uh, yeah. Then their next point, then the, uh, her? Her, yeah. Yeah. Next uh, course of action is to try and uh, re rebuild with his uh, like with his Palinchron Sapphire Medallion thing, but that's gonna be a while. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Forbidding Watchtower. What a card. In the meantime, uh, um, cool. Yeah. Cool JDP. What, what a card. It was. It's theoretically stamped, which is kind of kind of sweet. Um, forsake the worldly. So. Uh, I've played against Robin before on the Kalender Discord. Dude, Forsake the Worldly is an insane card. It's, it's really good. It's surprisingly good in blue-white control, because, like, there are very often artifacts or enchantments that you'd like to destroy, and several of the ones that you really care about getting rid of need to be exiled to really get rid of them. Like, for example, I'm playing... Yeah, Exi Nagro. Exiling is a really big game. I, I'm, I'm playing Red Green Aggro, and, like, <coughs> I'm attacking in, and Robin goes, Forsake the Worldly, your Rancor, block. <laughs> and I lost my creature and my Rancor, and I'm just sat there like, what do I do? It, it's a really good card. Yeah, I mean... There is a question that if you are in this, but like if you are in white uh, um, anyway, and you really want that effect, is it really better than an O-ring? But probably not. I mean, may maybe it is. Like I'm, I'm not saying like it's probably deck dependent, right? Yeah. But like it, yeah. white has three mana exile anything uh, uh, solutions. It's just like is this the best one? O-ring exiles anything. Find some gate and discard spell queller. Spell queller Silent is a really big, yeah. fair thing to. Discard here, considering that uh, your opponent is playing only big things. Jace Telepath Unbound. We're gonna... Yeah, uh, or at the very least, you probably don't care about the small... We're gonna downtick Jace on Preordain. Um, I agree with this downtick. You kind of want to, like, get the juices flowing. Yep. Um, so... I anticipate that we're gonna see a downtick on this uh, for Sick the Worldly at some point down the future, especially if uh, the Cage Sun uh, enters the battlefield, but this one is gonna be some time before that. Yeah, if, if TGM draws a land, uh, she can immediately cast Cage Sun, um, which would get negated. Yeah, which, which happened. Uh... Yeah, it's not what you want, though. Like, you would rather uh, downtick Jason the for Sick the Worldly in the graveyard than, like, negate is pretty... Uh, Negate is big game, but like <coughs> pretty valuable in this scenario. But you, you can't down take twice in a row, so you, you kind of have. No, to. no, I, I agree with you. Like that's that's what you were hoping that uh, maybe TGM did not draw land. 
could yeah. wait so you fulfill with the plus and then have the full sector work up next turn but that didn't happen which is fine yeah it's it's not too big too big of a problem so does kate son well, use uh name a specific name of land or uh uh kate son names a color. no it cares about color okay yeah so whenever you tap a, a land for mana yeah. of that color you add an extra yeah ex color. extra extra planet lands is the yeah. one where uh uh you have like you care about specifically the name of the land that you implemented. extra planet lands is such a stupid card I mean, it's I'm, not, assuming it's that it's in like that. <laughs> I'm assuming that's why it's in TGM's deck, and that's why uh, she has uh, um, only snow, snow covered islands. Yeah, because you you can name snow covered island and not double your opponent's islands, right? Is that how that interaction works? Unless unless your opponent has no covered islands of their own. Ha 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 ha! <laughs> There's there is almost no downside to running snow covered lands. Um, like period, there there isn't really a, a therefore. Well, mm, that is in terms of it, they cost money. <laughs> oh yeah, but on, like on X Mage, it's a different thing. But like I have I have my deck mostly built in real life, especially not that it's yeah. only volcanic island, and it's like I probably ended up spending like eighty to a hundred bucks on basics across time. Yeah, exactly. Which is a number. <laughs> yeah, like it's not it's not zero. I find it interesting that people. Ooh, Misty Hold to upkeep Misty Hold Tutor from. Uh, um... Do you think it, Do you think it's correct to give this Misty Hold Tutor rebound here? Um. No, because you're gonna give this Time Walk rebound and uh, win the game. Oh yeah, I guess you can just <laughs> win the game. That's fair. I mean, not not this turn, not quite, not quite this turn. Uh, no, no, this turn. You you uptick with Jace, cast Time Walk. No, it costs six mana. No, 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 no. You, you, you uptick with Jace, Time Walk. Um, and then next turn... Oh, and then down tick with down Jace. Down with Jace. Uh, because, because Jace uh, works with Soulfire Grandmaster. Right. Down tick yeah. with Jace, Time Walk again. Um, yeah, I forgot I forgot that Jace works Soulfire with Rebound. Um, because, like, yeah. Zapcaster made doesn't, and those cards are... Very similar to each other, but Jace is simply in a way where it works. Yeah, okay. Yeah, Cho chooses to to downtick on Supreme Will and uh, Impulse with it. Uh, I don't agree with this line because obviously. No, I don't agree either. But you you're giving to GM, you're giving to GM one extra turn. I don't. I I think I think I think Robbie just did the line where uh, where he could just win this turn. <laughs> what do we find mm -hmm. off of Impulse? Suppy V. Or maybe she Jesus did, Christ. Maybe she just didn't know that. Uh, uh, that Soulfire Grandmaster and Jace work together. Yeah, it, it's... Um, unfortunately, like, as a result of playing older cards and combinations of old cards, uh, wording isn't exactly correct. Well, Snap it's, it's not the matter for these two hats. These cards do exactly what... Right, but, like, if you look at Jace and you go, yeah, it just Snapcaster's back the thing, <coughs> um, then, you know, that that's what you're gonna... C and uh, Snapcaster and Soulfire Grandmaster don't work together like that. I don't think yeah. at least. Yeah, no, they don't. But you still, you still have to know what the hell you do. Uh -huh. yeah. Right. <laughs> All right. We, so, this, this was round one. Uh, yeah. Exciting, exciting, powerful magic as usual. Um, uh, how? Nobody's dropping, I assume. Robin took that game two one, correct? Just, I... yes. 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 Perfect. I've made it back. Done. Uh, Is Kara here? Hi. Yeah, Kara's here. here. I literally just got into my house. Let's go. Nice. Fantastic. So I can I can just bear on okay. Let's uh. That was great timing. We just finished round one. Like we we're we're wrapping it up. Yeah. That is great timing on my part. Well, sweet. It's sweet. I'm gonna take a stay in between rounds while I type out the uh matches and. The Red Mage can probably find something to talk about. Complain about how players oh. are playing Blue. Oh, are we, are, we, are we swapping streams? Uh, yes. Uh, no, well, it looks fine on my end, actually. It was completely okay, fine. Okay, yeah, yeah. You haven't had that problem in the last, like, you know, half an hour. Yeah, it, it should be fine. Uh, okay. so, yeah. Tell her about the, the interaction between Jace and Soulfire there. So, <clears throat> the problem, the difference between Jace and Snapcast. Uh, for the most part, is that uh, if you look at Jace uh, Prince Prodigy or Jace Telepath Unbound, as it says, 
the event that it's replacing is if that card would be put into a graveyard this turn, uh, it exiles instead. Whereas flashback, uh, which is uh, the ability that some customer may grant to a card, is tempered in such a way that it replaces exiling replaces the, the card being put anywhere else. <clears throat> So if uh, when you try to rebound uh, to rebound a, a spell that has flashback, uh, post cast with flashback, uh, it tries to go from the stack to hand, uh, and then uh, um, or to do the sorcery master thing, it tries to go from the stack to hand. Um, it's not rebound; it's buyback. But it tries to go from the stack to hand, and then at that point, uh, it's. Uh, um, He's recovering from a cold, ladies and gentlemen. Give him a break. No, this is not the cold. This is just my brain. <laughs> <laughs> it tries to go from the stack to hand and flashback. Eh, it's going to go somewhere that is not exile, so it's to exile instead. But with Jay's telepath unbound, it's not looking for stack to hand transitions, it's just looking from uh, stack to the graveyard transitions. So, yeah. like, it's like us going to hand. Not, not, nothing to do for me here. Uh, so, it, it works, basically. That's, that's the way it works out. Um, so, so there, there was a, there was a kill on the last turn um, with Robin where you you uptick with Jace, cast Time Walk, go to your next turn, downtick with Jace, cast Time Walk out of the graveyard, and flash it back with uh, Soulfire Grandmaster. Um, at which point you oh. then take infinite turns. Yeah, because, so, because Grandmaster cool. worked with Jace. All right, um, so I'm ready f to post the next match. Is it already ready? Yeah. It is interesting that actually, for example, Rebound uh, does work with Flashback, I think. Um, because the card is, card is getting exiled. <laughs> so, so, for example, this is an interaction, the card Delay, which uh, uh, counters a spell, but then instead of, uh, instead of countering normally, just, just uh, suspends it for three turns afterwards. If yeah. you flashback a card, the card will get correctly suspended because it's going from the stack to exile. So flashback is doing this card is already going from the stack to exile. I don't have to do anything. Uh, I'm gonna look up Soulfire Grandmaster flashback. Do we have the the thingy to put cards on the overlay as uh, as we did back in the day? Uh, I think the program is broken. The Java program is that was doing oh, that for us is, is broken. Uh, I'll look into fixing that. So, for our matches. In other news, this, the chat on the stream that I was working is working, but the stream has been. Broken. I don't know if that's me or if that's just the other app of stream. Uh, I, I put up the in between stream rounds. Is working. I don't think it's frozen. No, no, no. It was just frozen on a thing that. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's working fine. Uh, yeah. Joe raises, raises a great point. There is a cost to playing snow-covered lands, which is thermocarst, which hits you for two if the land was snow. Okay. So, Fine. <laughs> <laughs> so um, our matches this time are Robin versus Mr. Tulip. So Knowledge Bull Control and Mr. Tulip was on White Green Skipping Twos, uh, which is an aggro list. Mm -hmm. Nephila, who we've seen on uh, LD against Kara, who is on, uh, oh my god, the spiciest list, Boros Taxes, um, and Seismic... I'm sure I would even call it that spicy, but it's, it's an interesting list for sure. Seismic uh, on Warriors Aggro versus uh, TGM, who's on Big Blue. Who do we want to watch? Oh, um, hmm. I think we watched either Tulip or Kara, just because we haven't had a chance to watch them round one. Um... I like Skipping. Skipping Tools is an interesting deck. I Skipping Tools is a great deck. You want to watch that one? Yeah, let's watch that one. It's also, it's also faster, right? So, like, we're probably yeah, going exactly. to watch another. Uh... So, Skipping Tools is a very interesting, uh, usually white, green, or Abzan aggro list where you play very efficient aggro threats on three out of white. Things like Brimaz mm. and uh, Miri Weatherlight Duelist, like we have in hand. Ilo, Ilo, it's not working. Tulip has a two-drop in play. Uh, look, you also play I some two-drops. You, you don't, you don't <laughs> literally skip every two. By the way, this Snapcaster Mage promo <laughs> is so sweet. The like Judge promo snap is so cool. I, I love that card. Art. Uh, that's not the Judge promo. 
Is it not a judge promo? Is it? No, that's uh, uh, that is a RPTQ promo. Ah, uh, see, this kind of stuff gets muddled. Anyway, uh, and I actually don't like the title that much. I I like the art because it's very dynamic. All the other Snapcaster mages have been like just a kind of a dude standing there with a staff, and I like a lot more the Snapcaster mage who looks like he's like doing something, <laughs> playing soccer. Yeah, that's what he <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like he's doing. <laughs> yeah. Um. So recruiter of the guard can get uh dryad arbor here, which would let tulip hit his land drop, which I don't think he's made yet this turn. Uh, yeah. I mean, do you need a land drop too? After do you need your fourth land drop? No idea, but I'm not entirely sure. Draws I mean, nah. if uh, Mister Tulip is psychic, he's probably gonna go find uh, something like uh, Night of Autumn so that they can kill this propaganda. He is not a psychic. He's a very but, good player who reads really well, but he's not a psychic. Because this propaganda is gonna be a problem, is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Pro yeah, propaganda is gonna be a huge problem. Um, I mean, here's the thing: hmm. Robin has Mystical Tutor for. Uh, Time walk. Time walk. And then next turn, I mean, she Prairie Stream, which comes in tapped, and plays Soulfire Grandmaster. And then the turn after that, I mean, we're not we're not off to the races yet. I don't. No, think. no. I mean, it's not it's not close to being over, right? Like you need that you need you need Ooh, six yes. lands to make that combo work. Ooh, Supreme Verdict. Ooh. Oh, the Tig the Tig stops it. Yeah, but wow, that's cool. I'm actually surprised that uh, Robin decided to cast Mystical Tutor. I would have just slammed the propaganda here. Uh, you can't. Prairie Stream comes in tapped. And you don't have another Oh, you did. Yeah. Never mind. Prairie Stream is the, the buddy land from BFZ. Yeah. I'm going to get myself a cough drop. I'm going to be right back. <laughs> yeah, by, uh, of course. So, uh, Tool Appear is just kind of swinging in, applying pressure. Swings in for four here. Um... We're probably going to see Gadok Teague come out, because obviously Tulip uh, knows about the uh, Mystical Tutor for, what's what's it called? Sub EV? And then uh, Tulip is just bird. holding up. Yeah, it's just holding up a uh, path here with uh, Brushland. Robin has... Yeah, Propaganda is the card. Um... Yeah, Propaganda is a real piss-off. But to be honest yeah, with propaganda, you... Propaganda is kind of a jerk. Tulip can still swing with a card. Yeah, I... I... In develop, in the, or, or develop his board. Yeah, I, I think you probably just jammed the Thalia here if, uh, if, if I'm him. But... I'm I'm on full full Thalia action here. Yeah. Because but like... that means you don't you don't attack with anything. Yeah. Yeah. Um... Like, you want to pressure your opponent before the removal spell because the moment that they do is your whole board goes away? Like this yeah. Teague is not this Teague can die. Teague can die and then Supreme Verdict. And then Supreme Verdict cleans house. But yeah. if you want to if you want to both of those things not happening in the same turn, probably Thalia's the play. But uh, Tulip decides to attack instead. I mean that's fair. I mean Robin's at twelve. Robin's not at a whole lot of life. Yeah, and, and Tulip can accelerate uh Robin's death pretty hmm. fast. Robin yeah, I mean, if, tu if Tulip throws, a, if uh, if Robin throws a land here, the path the Tig. Oh the, no, no, wait. Yeah. The Talia was not cast. Yeah, so the Tulip can path the Tig here and uh, jam the Sulfur Grandmaster. Yeah, draws four cards off of Ancestral Vision plus Draw Step, all four of which were lands. I uh, mean, lands is what you want when on six mana you're gonna win the game, though, right? Yeah, which is, I mean, just great. Paths Tig. Um, Tool's gonna get a basic. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I basic, it basic still. Bad. I mean, they're looking real good for Robin. I mean, looking real good for Robin. Not, not so <laughs> hot for Tulip. Um. So uh, this, this, this Supreme Bad Dix is gonna clean up house at some point. I mean, so, so Tulip has to be a fair, actually. Drawing yeah, actually, fetch land allows him to monstrosity the Fleece Mane, which yeah, will make it just, live. Uh, I think you just use monsters. Now, right? Because that makes also indestructible, so like it doesn't die to the verdict anymore. Monstrosity is an instant speed effect. There's no reason to do it now. Uh, that Rather is in response. You could get stifled. You could get stifled. That's a great point. Stifle burn is in. Regus is gonna have four lands. I don't. I don't think that Robin has. Heck, but who knows? Yeah. 
I mean, well, Robin, Fabia, has, Fabia Robin has actually... Stifle Bird in hand, though. Yeah, but Stifle Bird costs... Like, it would cost seven mana to do the whole thing. Ops, not to Monstrosity. Yeah, and I think that he's going to get Trial Punished here, because... Uh, um, because he wants to attack, right, obviously. Yeah. For the, through the propaganda, but now Robin gets to go land. Uh, land he knows Bird about there. the Supreme Bird, <laughs> but he doesn't know that uh, that Robin has it on top land. Robin was keeping land. Oops. Yeah. Suppy V's and the way it goes. I think at Tulip's read was that he has to win the game where uh, Supreme Bird doesn't get cast, and uh, that's not what this game is. And uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, deeply unfortunate. <laughs> I, I love, mean, at this I point, love uh, Stone. This card's great. At this point, uh, um, Robin is just in a commanding position. Um, if you're Robin, do you wait until you have 8 mana? To do what? To... Okay, so... If you cast the, the Soul for Grandmaster now, you're exposing it to deck. Or to Sorcery Speed Dream. Yeah, such as the deck in Stone. Such as the deck in Stone. So do you do it? I guess the question. If you're Robin here, I mean, there's there's no reason to to do it, right? Because Tula, Tula plays Elspeth here. Well, the reason is that you win one turn earlier. You don't have the eighth land in hand yet, even. Yeah. This Elspeth is eventually going to kill you. Yeah, I mean, the, the Elspeth swings for four next turn. So... Yeah. <coughs> Ooh. It's not even eventually. It's that tough. was that was a really rough cough. Yeah, that's uh, that's kind of how things work. Um, hmm. So I think at this point you have to jam the soul for Grandmaster and probably hope hold the. Uh, um, I think you hold Snapper. V click and uh, nimble obstructionist up because. Is so there a counter spell in the graveyard? No. So yeah, okay. Then yeah, then yeah, you you hold you hold V click and in both directions. Do you upkeep V click? Um, nah. Well, no, I think you have to. Because like you just want to fault your opponent for one. Turn. Like if you on top with the Soul Fragment Master, you just win the game. Yeah. Um. I didn't I mean... tutor for time walk. <clears throat> oh. Never mind, you're dead. Yeah, tutored for uh, Suppy V, so you do not just win the game. However, yeah, you win the game. Mind. I was much... assuming that that was a thing that was going to happen, but it's Yeah, if, if you play Soulfire Grandmaster here, your hope is that end step... If, if your opponent just swings in with a soldier, you snap back uh, Mystical Tutor on end step for time walk, and then you win the game. Um, Tool being able to yeah. attack in stone the uh, Soulfire Grandmaster means that Pringus now, or pardon me, Robin now, has no way to win the game. Well, that's not true. They have plenty of ways to win the game. They just need to... No way to win the game other. soon. Um, <coughs> they're playing blue-white. What makes you con think that they are concerned with winning the game soon? Well, the the worry here is that Tulip is playing uh, green-white, which gives you the access, or access to the highest number of incidental artifacts Pardon me. Artifact and enchantment destruction. You have no counter spells in hand. Um, so if if Tulip rips like you know mm. Night of Autumn here, destroys your propaganda, Elspeth down takes propaganda is irrelevant four. at this point. You're gonna swing with the one giant idiot every turn. Like Wait, this, the the Elspeth is gonna tick up on the soldier, right? <coughs> and then the soldier is gonna have him for four. Draw that V-click. That's fair. Um, Corehaven. So, so there, there are some people who don't know what Corehaven does. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really good. It taps for a colorless or for one and a white and tap. You prevent all combat damage that would be dealt by target attacking creature this turn. So this card is great in control lists, and I don't see people running it enough. It's like um, Mazabeth, but it costs you mana, but it doesn't untap their creature. Yeah, but also, it's a maze of it that, it's like, you know, it's a maze of it that taps for mana, which is... Which yeah. is really good. Like, it turns out taps it for, tapping for mana is really good. Tulip draws Ravages of War, which is just, like, kind of nuts here. You downtick with Elspeth, 
Or you, pardon me, you uptick the... No, God, that's if you ravages of war, you can't attack. Oh, yeah. That's a propaganda in play. Hmm. Like, you can't ravages until the propaganda is Interesting. Because then, because then you die to click. Like, at that point, the click kills you. <laughs> well, well you, you uptick with Elspeth and swing for four with your soldier. For sure. The, you, yes, you pay the two I mana for it, that. you're left with four in hand. Four mana left. If Robin blocks with V-Click, perfect. There is no way that Robin blocks with V-Click. I think Robin at this point is uh, has to... Um, has to try to pressure the Elspeth. Yeah, tapping out a Fairy Conclave for... To, to uh, cast they're, they're not gonna be able to give the option. Yeah, it's, uh, it's not that bad. Yeah. Um, deck and stone a second? To, oh, the... Pardon me. I think I said earlier that the Soulfire Grandmaster ate deck and stone. Soulfire Grandmaster no, ate... It took a pop. Yeah. yeah. Dantix swings in. I mean, Robin is on a really tight clock. I mean, that is next turn. That, 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 that's that clock. I mean, you have to... I mean, what do they you do? They get to Snapcaster, uh, upkeep, Missile Tutor. Upkeep, Snap, an upkeep. Tutor. Yeah, they get to up and Snap Tutor, which, if they find an answer to the Elspeth, that's, you know, it, but I don't know what they can, what answer to the Elspeth they can find with Missile Tutor, but if they do... <clears throat> just draws a card. Yeah, I hope so just draw and that's just game. I mean, to be fair... There, there's a case to be made that you have a clue on the battlefield here. And so, for 5 mana, you can tutor any instant or sorcery into your hand. Snap, tutor, draw. Um, which would leave you with 3 mana left. So whatever you can find in your library for 3 mana, that's... Uh, like, is, he just gonna like... snap... is he going to just uh, snap Supreme Verdict, maybe? That also buys a turn? Snap Supreme Verdict is fine. Um, it's not good, but it's fine. It also buys a turn, right? Yeah. If your opponent swings... Plus, that also frees up the... You can, swing, you can uh, pressure the Elspeth to the Neurobot. Snap Neurobot tutors. I, honestly, I have no idea what Robin could be getting here for 3 CMC in blue-white that kills this Elspeth. For Do you have any idea? You, you play a bunch of control. What, what do we got here? What are our options? Uh, I mean, you can't kill it, but you can, like... Into the Royal it? Yeah? It's not good. No. <laughs> not at all. Because, like, it needs to be an instant or source is the problem. Like, if it was, uh, like, you can find, like, for three mana, you have access to, like, Detention Sphere, but... Yeah, D, D Sphere is fine, but, yeah. like... Whew. Doesn't do it. Robin's sitting on the edge of her pants. <laughs> like, right on the edge of their seat. Trying to figure out what... How to not lose, right? Mystical Tutor finds Time Walk. That's well, an hmm. extra turn. Uh, <laughs> that is the old I don't, I, I don't know anymore, but that, that allows you to flashback. Uh... No, you need to cast a Time Walk, okay. Uh, and then, yeah, oh, but then the aspect is gonna. Oh no, he doesn't have. Because the click's gone. If the click was around, uh, you would get to attack the Elspeth. Yeah, kill the and Elspeth. Kill it. Yeah. I mean, you can you can kill the Elspeth here by spinning up both Fairy Conclave and Mutavolt. Yeah, it's true. I think that's the line. Um. Yeah, Coraven is not up. I guess I think that might be the play. And then you attempt to trade yeah. these nimble abstractions for the. T Tulip cap tapped out of Corehaven. I mean, like, Tulip has Wasteland up, so we can just kill Mutavolt? Yeah, Wasteland is kind of a jerk here, but you can, you can, you can stifle better. Uh, do you have the mana for it? That's a good question. I do not know. Yes. Uh, yeah. Two for the Mutavolt, plus three for the Fairy Conclave. Uh, and then, yeah, you, you have enough mana to do it. Okay. Then you swing him with But all... then, I mean, Tulip is, is going to be free to just... You know, still gonna have the soldier, and also yeah, jam Mary. 
Something? Yeah. Yuck. But Robin gets a draw from this uh, from this Typhoon bed uh, because it's a cycle. God, that card's so good. And they're gonna have another draw next turn. So, like, you know, they're, 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 they're not the favorite to win this game, but... I mean, they're not dead. But they're not dead, yeah. Propaganda but they're gonna is, go to is one. A, like, a warping magic card. Have you ever played with Propaganda in Limited, by the way? Uh, I have not. Uh, it's in a buddy's cube. Uh, card sucks. I hate it. I have played. I've played. Uh, I've played with uh, Archangel of Tides. Is the closest ending, and like that makes you pay one, and that's already a jerk. Yeah, the fact that propaganda, the fact that both of those. Ooh, effects... Ooh. Green Sun Zenith is. Green Sun Zenith for Knight of Autumn here is probably gonna be the play, right? Yeah, or I was scrolling on Ravages. Yeah, you you just GSZ for. I mean, you got what? How much? How much mana? You got blue, one, two, three, four, five. I mean, you could also just get Palace Jailer. The funny Honclave means that, that uh, Robin can just take the monarchy back next turn if they so want. Yeah. So I don't, I don't like to play as much. Yeah, I, I don't like that. And then they get Snapcaster again, obviously. Tough, tough stuff, though. I, Tulip is looking at his list on on tap mm. right now, trying to find yeah. find what to to see. I mean, the the finding the Knight of Autumn makes the ravages are all better because if your opponent doesn't have a propaganda, then them not have, you not having lands is not as big of a problem. Yeah, Knight of Autumn, crack the propaganda, swing for one. Put your opponent on one with your soldier. Um, Ops to swing first. Fair enough. Uh, actually, what? Why? You would have two extra I, mana had you not done that. I do not have an answer to the question. What is happening? Is Tulip not playing Knight of Autumn? I think they want to deploy everything before the... Tulip is definitely uh, playing Knight of Autumn. Looking at the list right now. How does Tulip answer this mirror? How does uh, Robin answer this mirror? Uh, I'm going to be honest with you. It's not looking like they will. Like, can they... No, okay, never mind. They can double block with Mirror Ball. Which uh, is in their deck one... for reasons. Uh, each opponent can block with... can't block with more than one creature in this combat. That is the text on the top of Miri. Stupid commander cards that have yeah, yeah have random random text. Uh. <laughs> okay. Tool pun taps. And yeah, tool. Uh, Tulip, I mean, like, like Robin. Robin agrees that uh, it's not possible to. Tulip was very much winning that game. Commend. Commendations. I think, I think I think Robin wasn't dead, uh, and I think that maybe you try to like get another draw and see if Wrath of God is the card. But yeah, now we're seeing a much more skipping to his hand um, pre mulligans from Tulip. Yeah, four lands is a lot, but you do get five hundred elves into Night of Autumn. Yeah, which is nice. I'm, I'm not I'm not happy keeping it, but you, you'll kind of see what we and mean in a game where he actually you skips to. There's certainly a hand also on Pringo's side, which has four lands, two fetch and two planes, and then Forsake the Worldly, Curse of Exotia, Panoptic Mirror, right. um, decides to... Tool's gonna mold six. Finds Connors. Oh, you have also GSZ for no... For, uh, no... So, Ethereal Usher... And attack for two. For those of you who do not understand why Ethereal Usher is, here, is in here, Transmute for Knowledge Pool. Yeah. yeah. Um, are we keeping hands? We are totally keeping hands. So. Sanctum Prelate is a. a I don't understand uh, why. Uh, like. I'm not sure I fully understand why uh, Robin has this, like, aggro taxis card in their control list. Yeah. Not, not sure either. 
Tulip has an out here, which is great. If he doesn't draw a land, um, Thalia is, like, fine. I mean, it's, it's a pretty good play. I really dislike playing this Mishra's Factory here. Um, over what? Uh, you brainstorm first. Oh, sure. And then if you draw a fetch land, you can shuffle away the cards. Finding Mox Pearl is equivalent to finding a land, but it's a little more, more swaggy, uh, I would say. It has land-like <laughs> properties. Uh, three mana for Just a three really Oh, bad. but that gets condescended. Ah! Oh. <laughs> I mean, that's that's why you don't brainstorm, I guess. Yeah, no, okay. I, 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 I eat my words. You know what, actually actually thinking about it more... Um, oh, the, um, the... the matchup isn't updated, by the way. Um, oh, is it not? It... Oh, I'm so Ch sorry. Chuck is mentioning that the matchup is... Uh, oh, is, my is, God, I'm such an idiot. Yeah. <sighs> Eat mana spike. Mana yeah, spike? that's no. that sucks. I mean, you could you could cycle a condescend there or cycle a complicate there and still feel pretty good about it. Or not? If you cycle a complicate, then you feel significantly better about it. I have cycled comp. I know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, hey, at least one of the players was still right. <laughs> Chooses um... to Thalia over. Renegade Rally for no value. Fair yeah. enough. And, and end of turn. We see an end of turn brainstorm. Choosing not to deploy this Scooze, or choosing not to deploy uh, Avacyn's Pilgrim here, doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Yeah, okay. I don't know. Maybe they they missed up their lands. Uh, or they're worried about Wrath on Four. Uh, I'm assuming Temple is gonna scry the last card that was put down to the bottom. Notably, Counterspell is not out. No. Which is a pretty big deal here. Yep. Nisha's Factory you can block as a 3-3, three, three, <coughs> for those of yeah. you who don't know. Which, it turns out, really good. <laughs> uh, Attack with oh, it walked into it is going to go unblocked. Maybe both players don't know about the Nisha's Factory blocking for 3? Which is I mean, a totally valid. That's a weird interaction, but... Yeah, I don't know, but that would have been that would have swung the game so much if the player just dies. Tapping, I mean, okay. Tapping, if you're Robin, at a certain point, you give your opponent credit for knowing what Mishra's Factory does, so maybe you yeah. expect them to be like, oh, okay, I, I know what's up. Huh. You just pass the turn if you're Robin here. You don't do anything. Yeah, there's, there's no reason to do yeah, that. Yeah, no, no, it's, it's just, uh, yeah. You can you you have counter spell up. You have counter spell up. Your opponent has one card in hand. I mean, you're gonna get hit for a bit, but notably, uh, if you block with Nisha's Factory, you can keep a counter spell up. And uh, but I'm definitely blocking with Nisha's Factory here if possible. There's probably no creature in the graveyard, right? Uh... So the schools can't grow. No, oh, there's yeah. Primas. No, there's there's Primas. There's exactly. Why is he not blocking? Why I? Uh, it's entirely again. It's entirely possible that neither player knows about the Mishra's factory. Then block the pilgrim. That, wow. Yeah. What? That's. Like, I think you have to block something. Your opponent has one card. In. Cool. Cool interaction between Urza's factory and Mishra's factory here. Um, Urza's yeah, factory. Yeah. The lands, makes... the, the cards made by Urza's factory. Two twos uh, eventually can get pumped by yeah. by Mishra's factory. Cycles Ethereal Usher. I honestly, whoa! Even Gets mind my sense sucks. Uh, and I think Tulip now wins this game. Yeah, I mean, the Mishra's Factory. I think I I think it, Robin kind of lost the game on the yeah. back of it's not blocking with Mishra's Factory. Honestly, I, I think I think Robin wins the game, or, or is a, is in a much better position if. They just sp spun up Mishra's Factory, hmm. blocked as a 3-3 with Thalia, which kills Thalia, and then I mean, your okay. is left with a lot of less. Robin is not dead. Robin can steal the Wrath of God, and then uh, we, we, we we get to have a very different game. Uh, they don't, they but don't. they could have. Could have, yes. <laughs> Jailer is cool, but uh, not... Not gonna happen. Yeah. Um, and Tulip takes it. 
if yeah, sure. uh, I, if Robin had eaten two creatures with his with his mischief factory, we would have had a much different game. Yeah. <laughs> so Tulip takes that two out. What do you want to watch? Yeah. What's, what's still going on? Um, both um, matches. Which okay, I'll remind so you got, is uh, uh, LD versus Agro Taxes. That's uh, Boros Taxes, um, and uh, Big Blue versus Warriors. That's what you bought a Stoxes game. That yeah. sounds. Yeah. Uh... Where is it? There we go. And I'll update the players this time because I'm a professional. <laughs> Jund. All right. So these use the. A four-four figure of destiny is not something you see every day. So this is game two, and uh, Kara is uh, Simeon is up one one zero. Yeah. Uh, white red taxes. Hi, Robin and Tulip. Uh, how did the game go? I ask, assuming that they have microphones, which I'm not sure about. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it went. It went well, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, um, <clears throat> we, we, were seeing, we, were interesting... from, we were seeing Robin uh, that uh, Robin had a couple of occasions to block the Thalia with the three three Mishra's factory, and they did, yeah. they opted not to not to go for them. I mean, which opting, were, uh, opting kind to of attack, puzzled about opting to attack with the Thalia into a possible three three Mishra's factory also kind of sucked. Um, but I mean, it, you know, like not every game is played by robots. <laughs> you know what I mean, I mean? Also, like, it's possible it's correct to do it and just wing in and see what happens, but, you know. Yeah, yeah. But Simeon. it's definitely, um... Like, you know, if you have a big swing, maybe you're fine throwing it away. Uh, Thalia is pretty good, but... To be honest, I forgot that Mishra's Factory Blocks is a 3-3. Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> that's what we suspect. <laughs> yeah, we that, that's, that's how that works, right? Is that, like... You know, one person tells you it once, and you're like, that seems pretty good. And then you put it in your deck, and like, six months later, you're like, oh yeah, this card does something? I I'm just know. glad that you didn't see me goozle myself with my own Leonin Arbiter earlier. Oh no. Did that happen? Oh. <laughs> oh my god. That That's interface is kind of the worst. The X-Mage interface? Yeah. Yeah, the fact that you have to click on it and like activate the ability before you put things on the stack, it's garbage. It's real bad, yeah. I thought I had fixed my my stupid images, but now I have I'm seeing a Caracas with did, the face of uh, Did Neff Mullet? Did Neff just get absolutely destroyed with this painful truth? Uh... Tap tapped Swamp, Badlands, Dragon Skull Summit, and drew one card. Yeah. Maybe that's what they wanted to do, question I mark? do not know. <laughs> because they're on six life, right? Like maybe Violin maybe they're planning to do I don't know. Does anybody here play Adanto Vanguard in Canlander? Because this card's really good. It's a soldier, not a warrior, but I'm I mean I'm building soldiers sometime soon, so. We have we have two soldier lords and a, a soldier ringleader. I'm just saying. We have at least two soldier lords. This that anger. Is some. There's the one that fun. there's the one from like Cold Snap that gives all flashback. Uh, fair strike, I think. Yeah, and then onslaught block um, mm. was a tribal block. Oh, there's the plus one plus two one, right? Yeah. Um, um. That also makes them cost one less. Yeah, but it, yeah, yeah. Uh, battle war chief. I think is that one. Not going to play five color on. soldiers though. Five color warriors makes sense. Five color soldiers, not so much. No, I don't know. It's it's white plus m maybe one other color. Yeah. If I get to play next week, I'll play five color zombies. Oh, I, what? What? Why would why would you need to dig into five colors? Every color has good zombies. Uh, we... Wait, red has good zombies. Yeah. I don't what? Dude, Red's got some sick zombies. Well, as get to play such Timurid. as. Pardon? And we're at the Murder King. Oh my, he's a zombie? He's, hey, he's a, a zombie. zombie. Magic yeah, you, you got me. 
let me, let me load this like, here. The Innistrad blo- zombies are blue, the Amonkhet zombies are white, the Ravnica zombies are green, but I didn't know that there were red ones. <laughs> but yeah, no, you get to play Timur at the Murder King, you get to play Shambling Remains. Running, uh, running also, a really Amonkhet hard some... core. Shambling Remains is a good card. Also, uh, to be fair, Amonkhet had some red zombies, like you, you had the... Come... Well, they're, um... they're jackals that come back as zombies. Yeah, Josh yeah, yeah. Cool. I mean, like there is also too. like some of the the war the or whatever they're called. Okay, what's See, happening in this card? game, by the way? Because we are kind of being what yeah, things. Ne- Neff has a, a wrath in hand that only kills that doesn't kill either of Simeon's creatures, um, but kills their own birds of paradise. Draws, draws lightning bolt, which does basically nothing. Um, sitting with a thrun. Uh, on I mean, the lightning bolt. Uh, lightning bolt either kills the vanguard, like. Once you put Simeon at the point where they have to pay for life for the anger of the gods and then for life with the ball, that's a lot of. I'm just saying. I mean, it's a lot of life, but like, figure of destiny is sticking around here. I imagine you just bolt the figure of destiny on top of anger. The... Yeah, okay. Figure of destiny can just get blocked by the throne, ever. Right, but so so can Adanto Vanguard, and um, you don't really want to trade off your last creature. Plus, Figure Destiny isn't going to stay that small forever. It's only 6 mana to pump it up, and Simeon's on 5 lands. Does it gain Trample? Um, it, no, it, it gains flying, flying in First Strike, though. Oh, Flying, okay. So, I mean, because I was about to say, like, because if it doesn't, if it doesn't get some fun evasion, I can still block it. <laughs> Finds the land, but, you just, I mean, you just, what, activate Figure Destiny and, and kill him? That's yeah, I think it just pulled the Figure of Destiny. Yeah, you needed you needed to bolt figure destiny that last turn to still be alive. This one. Oh, but it's not build figure of destiny is live now. Yeah, it's six mana. Figure of destiny is live now. Dude, I love this plateau. Drew Tecker is by far my favorite old magic artist. Not because his art is good, but because it's very evocative. And this this plateau see... is just amazing. Yeah, this plateau has like the the plateau I have doesn't have this art. So so here's the the funny thing about Plateau. Yeah, um, they, they 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 lost the heart. They uh, lo- literally yeah, lost the uh, unlimited and revise, so they couldn't use the same yeah. condition you art, and that's why the the so, okay, unlimited okay. the yeah. unlimited Plateau, which is the one that you know is the most common over the revised Plateau, is uh, has different heart than the revised yeah. Plateau. Is and anyone so so open. who won out of Neff and Kara? I won in two. Okay. And who won out of Seismic and TGM? I won too well. Uh, yeah. Okay. So. Alrighty. I'm gonna get our get our final pairings. Um, unfortunately, because this is a six-player bracket, um, sometimes you get awkward pairings, um, which means that we will not have a finals. Sadly. Um, Unfortunato. But uh, Tulip is gonna get a, a pair down. Um, versus somebody. And we're going to play more games, which is really what we're here for. Yep. So I'm going to type out our, um, uh, what's it called? And then... Matches? Matchups. There we go. And then Leviathan. you can talk about more blue cards or whatever. I don't know. So it turns out Chalice on 1 is surprisingly decent against Jund. Chalice on 1 is surprisingly decent against a lot of things. Y'all also kind of missed the turn where I hard cast, uh, I hard cast, what was it? The one that mills funny wherever you swing. Um, oh, Fleet Solomon, I think? No, Nulamog and, and Wormcoil, same turn. Oh. Ulamog, hard cast Ulamog, show and tell in Wormcoil. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's an extremely brutal play. And if, yeah. and that's because I Wheel of Fortune, if, if I had it, he would have just hard cast Demro. She. She. Oh. she 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 sorry yeah no problem um you know i would have harm cast emrakul oh, wow and that was it was brutal and i feel kind of bad but holy <laughs> shit yeah i mean i'll be honest uh, a friend of mine over here has academy uh paradox academy build and i'm playing blue moon right so like they describe the matchup as i'm gonna build up and i'm gonna build up and then i get to do a broken thing once and then I get to do, if you answer it, I get to do another broken thing again. And then if both get answered, I'm usually out of gas. That's usually how the matchup works. But a lot of the way that the games end up playing is uh, 
they are ramping to hard cast Amra cool because they can't easily answer. Yeah. Like, I can't answer everything else that they have, but if they had a guy stand hold, I'm just dead. And they can get there pretty fast. <laughs> I also just uh, learned that my best card in any aggro matchup is to pull out Wormcoil Engine. Yeah. Yeah, no, so fair gaining enough. Six life. Gaining six life is a big game. Alright, is everybody ready for their matches? Yep. Yes. Let's head okay. into uh, the end of the tournament. Good luck! Oh, hey, Neff. Let's do it. Yo, Lons. I'm hopping into tempo. Okay. Sweet. All right. What do All we right. want to watch? What's, what's it going to be? So we've got um, Tulip, who's on Skipping Twos, versus TGM, who's on Big Blue. Nephila. Okay. John Del D versus... Who are the two players? Let's start there. Who Tulip the is 2 Who are the two O players? Mr. Tulip is 2 Everybody else is either 1-1 one, one or 0-2. Oh, because oh. six-player pairings. All right. I mean, if there is one person that has the option to go three all, let's just watch. Yeah, let's just let's just watch Tulip. No. Yeah. Um, it's becoming a much more common occurrence to have Tulip like be at the top here. Um, I just want to say like, Mister Tulip is by far mm. our most consistent and good player. Like he just wins. I mean, wins I'm, 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 not, I'm not sure I would say that they're like the best player they have necessarily. Just I'm. I'm not saying they are, I'm not trying to make the call. But they're definitely the most consistent. They are here every week. Uh, he um, shows up. It's, he's, uh, he's probably one of the best aggro players that we have in the league. Um, but, and, uh, yeah. I mean, he's it, it, uh, just really consistent at what he does. Yeah, I, I mean, he, he, is, he has never done that, right? Like, he always shows up with a plausible list ready to do well. Um, uh, by the way... And... Uh, None of you guys Open, get to see. Uh, none of you guys get to see this, but um, all of Mr. Tulip's lists are named after ships in the Culture series. Uh, so, for those of you who don't know, um, there's a series of books uh, about a like future of humanity. It's it, sci-fi. There's a a mass called the Culture, and they name their ships really dumb things. Um, like really long, obtuse names. Uh, so last week, Sol Ring star from TGM. That's pretty hype. It's it's extremely good. Um, against Tulip, we are gonna see a Thran Dynamo next turn, probably. Uh, Tulip is probably gonna land Knight of Autumn and destroy the Azuri Signet. Probably destroy the Sol Ring. Or just part. Pardon me. Destroy the Sol Ring. I said Azuri Signet because it was the first thing that I saw when I meant Sol Ring. Anyway. Okay. No Thran Dynamo then. Fine. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Tula played red green aggro last week, which notably uh, TGM does not have. It does not have another a land second land. Wow. Yeah. So counter spell is not live. The remand is live. Yikes. Um, no, there's still two mana. Last week was red green aggro called "What Are the Civilian Applications?" and this week is uh, just another victim of the ambient morality. So Ooh. I bought. A new uh, water thingy. A new uh, coffee mug. Coffee new, like, water travel, thingy? Travel mug for <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> and uh, it has the good upside that uh, the coffee that I put in it stays warm for a really long time. Very well insulated. Right. The downside is also that the coffee that I put in it stays warm for a really long time. <laughs> because, like, I made coffee for myself before we started. Mm-hmm. And it's still kind of too hot. <laughs> <laughs> That's really good. It's getting there. But... <laughs> Did we see Tulip spin up uh, Mishra's Factory this last turn? Uh, I... The... Oh, no. The Remand got cast. No. Yeah, okay. Oh, yeah, Remand yeah. and then Final Shaman was cast again. Yeah, TGM! Finds nothing. This yeah, is terrible. I mean, I think, I think, I think, I think that they were. To... Look, Yo. if based on uh, the hands that we were seeing, you were asking me who was favorite to win the game, I would have picked TGM. But skipping on all these land drops is just, uh, it's just brutal here. Uh, I think that now it's too late. I think when once the Farman Shaman, once the Farman Shaman is going, I think you, you just lost the game. Uh, you have to discard Renegade Rallyer here, which kind of sucks. 
Oh, no, discards Avacyn Pilgrim, which stayed in hand. Yeah, it's fine. I mean, what do you what do you get here? If you're a tulip. Oh. What's the fastest three drop threat you have that no, you. I think. Uh, do you just take? Don't you just take Kazali uh, uh, Pride Mage and smash the Signet? Yeah, there you go. Wow. Yeah. And is now, Tula... and now TGM is just into the Stone Age. Is Tula playing literal actual uh, Rex Age? I don't know. Uh... If Tula pulls, then that would have been a better pick. Tula is case. not playing literal actual Rex Age. That's interesting. Right, fair enough. Uh, I would have picked that card as better than Kazali Pride. Okay, actually, okay, there is no reason to play Rexage over Pulmonix. Over what? Pulmonix Liver. Sorry, um, not Pulmonix. There is a Sliver that destroys. Harmonix Liver. Tula played nothing last turn because all of his lands are colorless. Draws another colorless land in Gavany Township. Yeah, this kind of sucks for Tulip. I mean... Opting not to attack... Oh, with did you have to land? Yeah. Okay. Opting not to attack with this Mishra's Factory... And now Counterspell is gonna... Is gonna start... Uh, is gonna... Is, is Now Counterspell was live. Yeah. I'm actually so mad. I'm an angry individual. Yeah, but... You're still here good now, so is that... I'm, st like, I'm still here. Happen. My internet is recovering. I saw the, the spike that caused me to... Why? Uh, hovering around 1054 kilobytes per second. Didn't drop any frames, though. <laughs> there you go. Steve's back. Weird. Um, so, uh, uh, so another question. pardon me. Is there nothing to do with, not, nothing to do with anything that is going on, and they should probably ask you offline. But do you ask, do you upload the VOD directly from the Twitch page, or uh, from, uh, or do you download them and then, uh, or do record I, them I... locally and then upload them from the computer? Uh, I I usually just downloaded the VODs from the Twitch page. Um, oh, so you download them, okay. Yeah, you... I, I... This PC is not the newest mm -hmm. thing in the world. Um, I did run a Moto stream recently where I was recording at the same time. Um, and my CPU is consistently maxed out on all okay. cores. So it's... You know. Yeah, no, because, like... It would be, like, for example, when I upload my own videos for... Uh... Tulip wins that game. Uh, when I upload my own videos for like uh, for like my stream and stuff, what I usually do is uh, um, the, the game ended by the way. Yeah. Uh, uh, TGM considered. I think uh, the I think she claimed that there was a bug on on X Mage, but I don't know if that's. Uh... Oh, the the <coughs> priority bug. Yeah. If both players skip at the same time within, like, start a skip at the same time within a certain window, one player, neither player will have priority, and both players will read as waiting for the other one. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, uh, what was I trying to say? Not um, entirely sure. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, usually what I do is I trim the video from, like, the pauses. So, like, if uh, there is uh, a... The thing at the start, right? But like, if there's like eight minutes of silence while there is just a going live stream on, yeah, just trim that. Often, uh, yeah, I just trim that. But I don't, if that's not feasible, that's fine. I can probably make that happen. <clears throat> probably want to add the uh, video starts at blank in uh, the description, but then yeah, some somebody did that for our uh, recent one. Yeah, left a, somebody left a comment, but we might we might just well put it in the description. Um. TGM doesn't have the fastest start here. Do they have an interactive start? Because that's what they need, I think. No. I don't think it's any... Vile. Um, are, we're probably expecting... Mm. Like, out of Tulip, what do you expect next turn? Call or Salt of Spirit? Just, just like, hard cast... Spell oh. Swindle. What a spicy, spicy card. I think I, I think I like playing Ladamri's Cold. 
Because you have a hope that this Salto Spirit eventually get cast for free. Mm -hmm. So. And obviously there. You might even want to let Amblis call for a one drop and put it into play immediately, but I don't know what one drops are good enough to do that. You might just want to go to the two, get the three drop instead. Noble Hierarch is probably good enough. Yeah. Cards will good. That. You have infinite mana. You don't need more mana. He has. He's plotting. A little bit, yeah. Yeah. You Not even a little bit. He has five lands in hand. You can get a, a one mana two one, like a Savannah Lions. I think you. I think. I think that you want to let Amblis call for like Knight of all. Yeah, I think I think Knight of Autumn is your highest value play, yeah. because like, you know that most of TGM's uh, ramp centers around artifacts. Yep. Um, or all of it, in fact, like, they're not green, so... I mean, that's, they, they that's, the, that's the big X decks, right? It's just like, all <clears throat> artifact ramp, plus whatever. Yeah, except, I mean... That's but that's the thing, right? Like all of the colors that are not green can only ramp through. Leads <laughs> on selfless spirit. I guess uh, blue has access to high tide. Uh yes, and big big black which, plays assume, bubbling. Much, I'm, which is great. I'm assuming that the, I'm assuming that TGM plays high. I mean, that's where Pali glare, so like you wouldn't have that card in your Yeah, I, I believe I believe TGM plays high tide, but uh, I can pull up the deck and check. I have a pretty brutal uh, sequence. Uh, like she's not gonna go do anything on turn three, which is really bad. Yeah, puts another counter. Uh, instant I... is high tide points. Uh, high tide is not points. I think at next high turn, not in the deck though. Keep... Whoa! It's an instant, uh, right? I... I'm not crazy. No, yeah, it's an instant. Whack. Right, because it's part of the... the... Oh, okay, if you're a TGM next turn, you slam the Gilded Lotus, uh, do you keep up spell swindle? Um... I think so, gotta... Gilded Lotus is dangerous, because your opponent has approximately 75 billion effects that can destroy your artifact. Yeah. On the other hand, spell okay. swindle oh. is dangerous because your opponent had an either vibe so, so here's the thing. If you, on the board without casting spells. if you slam Gilded Lotus here, Tulip can uh, Eladomri's Call for Kasali Pride Mage, Aether Vial, Kasali Pride Mage into play, and pay for it. Oh, yeah. I mean, obviously. Like, given Tulip's hand, it's better to just keep Spell Swindle up. But there is the chance that this Spell Swindle doesn't do anything. Because there is an Aether Vial. Yeah. Tulip Elspething. Um, next turn and swinging in for five with selfless spirit. Uh, I think it was correct. I think it was correct to just jump the lotus. So, uh, I, I agree. I I don't think because if you want, if you on top with it, you're so fa so much favored. Uh, like you're so close to the Zulamog if your opponent can just destroy it. Yeah, I I don't think um, like leaving up spell swindle is a very high value play. Um, and I mean if. Uh, I think Tulip, I think Tulip, yeah, I think getting Knight of Autumn is just correct, rather than, uh... That's entirely fair. T yeah. Two for one rather than one for one on that is pretty good. Yeah. Because, like, it's not like you're pressure. it's not like you need the mana, like, it's not like you're... I need to... Yeah, it's, like, not, like, it's not like playing this Elspeth You get to Vile in the Knight of Autumn this win. turn, and then still cast your Elspeth. Oh my god, Aether Vile is such a good card. The card's so dumb. I'm very sad, by the way. Um, I can't put Mercadian Lift in my tu cube list. It's terrible. Uh, what? Mercadian Lift? M Mercadian... I think it's called Mercadian Lift. It might be called, like, Mercadian Winch or something. Um, let, me, let me pull it up on Scarfall. It's so... It's what? such a bad card. Okay. We really need to get the chatbot that that finds cards. That's that's we need we need to do that. It is called Mercadian Lift. It's a it's a two mana artifact. You can pay okay. one and tap to put a winch counter on it, and then can tap and remove X wind ca winch counters from it to put a creature card with CMC X from your hand into play. Yep. It's it's not a good card, but I love it. Um. I love Bosium Strip too, but I can't put that in the cube because it's not an uncommon. <laughs> I'm, I'm just making you mad now. Field of Ruin was the draw for TGM. Uh, uh, no, Artisan of Kozilek was the draw 
Field of Ruin was already oh, Field in. Field of Ruin was already in hand. Did I miss it the whole turn? Because that's an opposite that was in there last time I checked. Yeah. Notably, Field of Ruin means that I had these uh, Gilded Laws not met in an... Uh, not meta demise, uh, Artisan of Kozilek would be cast this turn. Yeah. You know, I, I forget who said it, but one of the North 100 crew once said, I have yet to lose a game where I cast a Dramoka's command for an effect. Like, like I have yet, to, I have yet to lose a game where I've resolved a Dramoka's command. It's such Dramoka's a, command is really good. It's such a powerful tempo play, man. What's the downside on Elspeth? Like the uh... ult on S1? Uh, everything is indestructible. Well, everything you have is indestructible. Everything you have except for Planeswalkers is indestructible. And Insights and Sorceries. Oh, well, thank God. <laughs> um, nothing. The do... Spirit of the Labyrinth gets swindled. That means that this out of Kozilek is, is, gonna, is gonna be around next turn. Eight. If, if a land is drawn. Artisan if a land Kozilek, is drawn, yeah. we're, we're live for Artisan of Kozilek. Yeah, or uh, close to an Ulamog, which you might want to... Artisan of Kozilek like, isn't going to do happen. anything, though? Like, in terms I mean, of... Oh, man. Being, this... being a 10-9? Looking... Being a 10-9 is pretty being, good. Being a 10-9 is really good, but, like, the, the ETB is, is not going to do much. Uh, being a 10-9... Yeah, no, you, you, want, you, want to, you want to destroy the Elspeth, uh, but yeah. they, they, the land was not drawn, and Tulip just takes it. Tulip, Tulip takes the game on that one. So congrats to Tulip, hey, our we... 3-0 player from this week. Uh, he's yeah, now way uh, ahead in the the season's rankings, having three would both this and the last tournament. Yeah, our, our, our other players that often show up need to drop by and be up this luck. Uh, what was uh, um, so our what last... was the TGM record? Uh, one one two. You, uh, did TGM lose? Did yes. you just lose Tulip? Yeah, you. Yeah, Why aren't you playing I'm, TGM I'm... now? I got destroyed to zero. I won zero times. Yeah. Um. Uh. No. TGM is one two. They were playing Tulip right now, right? I'm not crazy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. Didn't you beat Seismic Lance? Or did I, I you lose? Yeah, I beat Seismic. Okay. So yeah, one one two. There we go. I'm doing the math. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think you would have get, you would get you would have gotten paired against Tulip uh, unless. Uh... So okay, so are you watching the Seismic Lawns car game? Yeah, I, I, I just moved on. I just what? moved to it. What? Uh, we're we're not done with our last game yet. Seismic and Car are still playing. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm ready, but we are done. But Neff and. Uh yeah, so so Tulip is three zero. Um. TGM is 1-2, Neff is 2-1, Robin is 1-2, uh, and then we still have to resolve And, right and then we're, we're still waiting for the final Okay. Yeah. Want to see how it goes? You know, for so many pe people bringing blue decks uh, this week, games got resolved pretty quickly. I'm a, I'm a fan I of I mean, that. they weren't Sererip my stupid mono blue polymorph control deck that doesn't do anything. No, it's, uh, that that wasn't even. They like, were like they were proactive blue decks. So that wasn't even like mono blue polymorph. That was just Seinfeld that pretends to have a win condition. I mean, it was it was Seinfeld. I mean, yeah, that wasn't even like it didn't even pretend to be something that wasn't Seinfeld. It was uh, it was never not Seinfeld. Um, yeah, I cannot watch. Oh, there we go. I was about to say, I can't watch this last game, but uh, I totally can. So I'm going to update the match players so everything still works. So we're going we're gonna to watch our last game here. Um, yeah. It's exciting. I, I mean, like, this is actually a pretty interesting uh, game here. Yeah, there's a very developed board state, uh, and uh, which is looks kind of one sided. But... Seismic's gonna then, uh, draw some cards. To be fair, Seismic Lawns uh, only has two lands in play. Um, but what's what's really great about this board state is that Seismic can Aether Vial in and Arash and Foremost, 
give his uh, Rayhan double strike and kill both Kinjali Sunwing and Knight of the Holy Nimbus on the first, uh, in the first strike combat set, which saves your Rayhan. Yeah, it's pretty good. I mean, he elects not to do it here, um, but you know. But yeah, no. Uh, so right now. I, I finished punching in uh, the results, and we're still waiting on the last match, uh, which uh, notably... Uh, oh, the, the overlay hasn't been updated, by the way. Just letting you know. Is it not? Yeah, it has. No, it hasn't. Uh, I think maybe the stream... Maybe, may, oh, oh the, the stream just froze again for me, sorry. No, it's uh, alright. Okay. I mean... I mean, I made a fresh this thing. Rayon's gonna put counters onto Metallic Mimic. Making it a seven five. That's a big boy right there. That that's a large metallic mimic. That's a that's a chunky boy. Simeon's got four cards in hand, and I don't have access to her hand. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna interrupt her here. There we go. Dragon Maladin, P and Kirin, Trinisphere, Soldier of the Pantheon, and Batter Skull. Simeon just uh, gave the GG. Man. Rough. Was this game three? Yep. Rough game three loss there to uh, Warriors. Which means that Seismic fi finishes 1 2 and Kara finishes 0 uh, 3. <laughs> I think. If, I, if I'm doing my math right. I mean, the bracket should tell you, right? Hmm. Yes. Okay, and, so. Mindblade Reaper. What a card. That is, is it, that is a magic card. Yeah, I think fair enough. <laughs> Nephilim's total land destroyed count is eight. That's hilarious. <laughs> that's not, that's actually lower than you would like. Right? Yeah, lower than you would expect, to be fair. Mm. All right. <laughs> One uh, of them was okay. yours with Boom Bust. I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm just, oh God, I'm so, that, that match was like, so close and it's just like yeah played as optimally as i could have yeah right okay so final results for this week so final results as far, for as, this I, week. as, far as i understand and i also want to double check the that the things i put into the into the into the spreadsheets are correct tulip gets the the top the win with three and oh yep congratulations to tulip second is nef with two and one mm -hmm. yep. Then we have uh, three players tied at 1-2, which are... Uh, oh, we should uh, have... Seismic long. All of the rest of our players have gone 1-2. Oh, so Simeon is also 1-2? Yes. Okay, yeah. Uh, that, that's why I did yeah. this. I thought that she was 0-3. Uh, um, a fun, so, fun little... Uh... So, okay, I ha and then I have everybody else. So, <coughs> Lance, Robin, TGM, and Simeon are also are all 1-3. Yep. 1-2. Yep. Uh, In a the fun final... Little... Uh, uh, in the final uh, uh, rankings, this puts uh, Tulip first with 14 points. Yeah. <laughs> followed by Neff and Lance at 5. Yep. So you guys need to be up this luck because Tulip is kind of destroying it. Tulip is really worth everybody. it. Not only, yeah. not only did Tulip 3 0, he also 6 0'd his games. <laughs> the, the old. Well, okay. One Tulip of those a was a buy. I mean, the buy kind of counts. You're not going to call a buy. 2-1 win on the buy. <laughs> my, my opponent took a, t a tough game off of me, but I, I did get the buy that run. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you lose to, uh, to um, Mr. C.H. Air. Um, yeah. Or, uh, yeah. no, no, it's, uh, it's M.T. Chair. M.T. Chair. Um, <laughs> But, I mean, uh... give me <laughs> a, give me a buy on two big slow blue decks against Celestia Agro, and I'm happy. Yeah, fair yeah, look, yeah. Look, I mean, I would, it, I mean, it's also like probably we were probably... we were watching at the finals, and like in my mind, I was saying like, huh. So we have the Celestia deck with a billion free decent chance against the, the the deck that heavily rely on artifacts to do its thing. What yeah, can possibly I'm, like, I'm just sitting here <sighs> playing Boros in a like boros taxes and i'm just like so how do i stop you from playing the game today and it's like uh the answer sometimes is well i guess you don't right well against like aggro it's it's not gonna do well yeah yeah 
Yeah, and because you're trying, like, it's the same, it's the same thing, like, you're trying to go slow and be tricky, you're trying to go fast and be tricky, your opponent is just trying to go fast and you're just gonna get there. The thing yeah. is, like, I have the removal answers to deal with aggro, it's just I'm not drawing them. Yeah, um, that's fair. To but, uh, I think, um, I, I have a feeling, though, that if I brought a deck that was really good against aggro, I just wouldn't face Tulip the entire time. Yeah, that, that's but, how matchups work, right? Is it, like... You, you put a Mangle Horde in your deck, yeah. and you're like, alright, I'm gonna really tech out these artifact matchups, and you play like six players in a row who are only playing enchantments. <laughs> who are not Benjamin Wheeler. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> alright, well, um, thank you to everybody for showing up. Thank you to my esteemed co-host, the Red Mage, for hanging out and helping us. Thank you to my internet oh, for only crashing once or twice. Uh... <laughs> Uh, congratulations to Mr. Tulip for taking the 3-0-6-0. Um, I mean, off the buy, but it's still pretty impressive. Um, yeah, I, I don't know really what else there is to say. If you looked at this... No, I mean... Uh, I mean, this... the, 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 the last thing that there is to say is that if you want to enter this tournament the next week, all of this powerful magic could be yours to play. The only thing that you have to do is uh, uh, so uh, how how much of my long winded unnecessary long winded was not caught on uh, exactly uh, zero percent of it, all of it. Okay, well, so one more time. <laughs> basically, what, what I'm trying to say is that I just posted the the link to the Discord in chat, and if you want to play in this event next week, just uh, yeah, <coughs> show up. Uh, <coughs> Show up on stream, uh, you get to sh show up uh, on the Discord or uh, from the Lovina Deland Discord uh, at Elohim in the Highlander channel and you invite like that or there's an invite in chat or there's going to be an invite in the YouTube description, this is, this is on YouTube, then uh, you you tell us your list uh, after the announcement goes up on Thursdays and then you show up on uh, Sunday at... Uh, at noon Pacific or 3 p.m. Eastern or 9 p.m. Europe, and you get to play some powerful magic, which is awesome. And then I also said some stuff about Ancestral Dreamhold, which is not important. Yeah. Come come and play Highlander with us. Uh, if you don't know what Highlander, Highlander is, is great. Uh, look it up. I don't know. You can find stuff on the internet. I'm going to stop this before my internet dies again. Yeah, okay. Let's. Uh, Thank you, everybody. <laughs> yeah, see, we'll see you all next week. Goodbye.